Good morning, Rab Boisai. Ah, Lili Nishmasi Mimiros versus Mordechai. Welcome to all the guests. Rabbi from Indianapolis, that I know. What's your name? Rick, Rick Bentley. Rick Bentley. Oh. Ruben Bentley. How could you forget a Bentley? Wow. From Indianapolis. You're probably the only Bentley in Indianapolis. If you know what I'm talking about. Over there, it's only Fords. The boy said we have with us a tremendous guest, Eli Dolinsky. Shkut for coming. Oh, <laughs> Issy Bachner. Dear Belly, since having joined MDY, my habits have changed. My habits have changed among my newly acquired daily activities. And he just says that his Rav, Rav Shol Ariel Shlita, said how the Balaturim says how Shmois, the whole thing, the whole drush, he put it in the thing. Sorry, I cannot align as beautifully as Yoshi. Thanks for the Torah you spread for enriching my life. Izzy Bachner. We have a picture of Michael Chesel together with Fischl in Florida. <laughs> Typical Michael Chesel. And we have Raboisai, a very, very long email from the big famous Mechaber, Michael Cohen. I don't know if you guys remember, but Michael Cohen wrote a Sefer. I'll show you a Sefer as soon as we're done with this email. Uh, in honor of my father's Zecher Tzadik of Rachel's yard side, I want to share the story. You said, that uh, people regret not pulling out the perfect line, like when by the God, there by a Godel, by Rucham Kanevsky, Zitzel, and asked, when he asked, why don't, why don't you have a beard? The first time my father came to, I believe his father was the Meshgich Tells. I don't know, it doesn't say anything, but something like that. If you, years ago, three, four years ago, he was a big, big part of the Shir. He still is, I see. I, I'll remind Oilam, here's the Sefer, his famous, famous Sefer. Gaiva. <laughs> <laughs> It's a full, full safer that he wrote about me. Even, even an Anav could appreciate a safer like this, <laughs> written about him. Gaiva de Leo, the ultimate guide for how to harness your inner Bal Gaiva. Best selling author, look in the mirror, you're going to love it. Eli Stefanski, Kitzer. There's a lot of good jokes in here. The, the truth is that this is a Chavetz Chaim safer. He just, he did the outside, but it's a beautiful safer, nevertheless. I tr- people, anybody that comes into my office, this is the first thing they pick up, and they look through the whole, the leaflet, there's good stuff here. Okay, so anyways, so Michael Cohen writes like this, that his father went to Rucham Knevsky, and they spoke about um, cloning, and Rucham said to Shamish, I didn't know there was such terror in America, he then called my father the Masmid of America. Kids said, then they went to another gadol, and the other gadol said, so his father was all excited that Rucham gave him such a haskama, so he started telling him the whole shock of the the sugi of cloning, and the, the Gadol looked at him and he said, cloning is also? So before his Talmudin could even appreciate the tension in the room, my father retorted, what about the parsha of Mamzer? Vayidim Aaron. Aaron was quiet, whatever that means exactly. But anyways, he said like this, he has a story that tops my Port Authority story. His wife came home from New York City, uh, and then basically she left her phone in the car, and then he called up the phone and a guy picks up and goes, what up, brother? He was confused. He said, bro, if you want your phone, it'll be 50 bucks in cash. He hung up, he realized that his phone was stolen and then he called back and says, look, I have my calendar, all my contacts, I'll give you $100 in cash if there's no scratches on the phone. He loved it. He said, meet me at 110, at 110 in Manhattan in 10 minutes. Deal. But wait, how will I recognize these? He said, I'm wearing a Raiders jersey, gray sweatpants. Thanks for helping me with my phone. One problem, in New Jersey, he, gets, he called the 24th precinct, precinct and he let, it, he let them know that there's a guy that stole his f- wife's phone. He's on the corner of 110 Manhattan in 10 minutes. And he's wearing a gray sweatpants and a Raiders jersey. So the guy ran to the, to the corner all excited to get 100 bucks. And basically, uh, there was a bu- the kids said they arrested him and he got his phone back for free. He thinks that's a better story than mine. My pitom, we had... There was, there was no violence, there's no... That no, doesn't even come close. Anyway, the Koilo is sponsored by Anonymous from Lakewood for Fua, for Tinek Ben Malka. The Mesech is sponsored for the unity of Am Yisrael. Parnasa Chodesh, there's seven of them. Yosef and Chai Yisrael for the Schusim that come from supporting Limerat Torah. Parnasa Chodesh, you did your prayer area. The Schusim of Chagum Mekarev, the Oilam is on Zoom. You can look over there, you'll see them over there. 
Chana Rocho Bas Michal Chaim David Ben Shulamis and Shoshana Brocho Bas Shulamis. How about Mendel Lerner? Is he on? Oh, that guy looks new. Is he new? No, not really. Yesterday. Ah, uh, yeah, with his father. His father behind. Okay, great. From Brooklyn. Huh? David Adresh from Halechem. I like to get up. Shmak. Cozy, sitting back, learning Torah. <laughs> Uh, it should be rebel if you continue to the I just read this morning. 2,400 injured soldiers. Injured doesn't mean stitches. Injured means injured. 2,400, 45 in critical condition. I don't know if you heard. I don't know if it's true. I hope it's not true. But supposedly yesterday, almost 10 Chayelim got killed. It's not out, but that's, that's the rumor. I don't know. So the matzah is not good. Doilum should pick it up in learning and in tefillah. Paras HaChodesh, in memory of Binyamin Early, for the, from Anonymous in Manchester, who joined this year at the beginning of Saita. Paras HaYoyim, we missed this yesterday. Moshe Bandel, L'schus HaChosen Yehuda, Ben Brindel, Vakala, Mushka Bas, Dova Rivko, Bandel, L'schus Kavani Mashiach, the Kavani Mashiach, Shivnu Bais Bisro, Bais Chabad, Bais Toira, Umitzvah, and Maisim Toivim. Paras Ayoim missed from yesterday. Yaakov and Cheney Siegel, Rufo Shlema, Avro Menashe, Ben Rachel Miriam, and Eliezer Dov, Bensi Poyerfega. They had a kidney transplant yesterday. Oh, yesterday, just yesterday. Talking about a kidney transplant. One, one of them is a big tzad. They're both tzaddikim, but one of them gave up their kidney. And I saw a picture of Yoel Elkan, our famous, the Yoeli Elkan from Lakewood who donated his kidney a few months ago with the recipient, the, the, or, or sorry, another, another donor, two donors, somebody sent me a picture. Baruch Hashem, the procedure went well. Refua Shleima, tremendous chusim. And by Michael Cohen, the one and only, the mechaber of the Sefer, in honor of my dear father, Rebbe Fall Yaakov Ben Eliezer's Yardzai, Ari Stawas, Stawis. Refua Shleima, for Leib Bas Gittel, who is having surgery today. Refua Shleima, the art of the month, the anonymous for chus, for his childbirth, for his daughter, and healthy baby, Rabbi Zai. Here we go. We're holding the Avsamaches Omid Aleph. And we're speaking about Yish. Yish is a terrible thing to give up. So, according to Rav, Yish works. Yish. And we're going to try to ask Akasha, Rav Sheshis, ask the Kasha. He says, that it doesn't make sense that my Rebbe would say something like that. Yish on its own is Koina. And he asked the question, it's probably my Rebbe was sleeping, he was about to fall asleep. That what? That if there's two Ganavim, somebody stole an object and somebody stole from the Ganav. Hagoyim and a Ganav. So according to Rav, the second Ganav has to pay to the first Ganav. The first Ganav acquired it so much so that it became his and if somebody steals it from the Ganav, he has to pay the Ganav. A, a penalty. Double. Toshma. Five lines down. It says in the Pasuk, Utvachai, I'm a charai, famous pasuk about Dalad Vehei. He knows his shor se, Utvachai, Machari, Hamishu Baki, Shalad, Nachas, Shor, Ba'arbet, Soin, Tachas, and Se, but it says those two words together, Utvachai, Machari. He shechted it or he sold it, that's when you're chai four or five. Matvicha, Shainu, Chizeres, just like when you shecht an animal, it can never go back to being alive. Af Mechira, Shainu, Chizeres, I said, it was a, I saw this with my own eyes where they shechted a cow in a shlachtoiz in one of those boxes. And it's such a fast process. They shecht. A second later, they turn over the box. It's all uh, hydraulic. It flips over. It opens up. And the animal just falls down into like a pit and bleeds out. This cow jumped up on all four and started running. And there were people everywhere. And they have guns and they start shooting it and it was running and jumping and, and, and people flying this way, that way, crazy. And then it, like, obviously, I don't know if it died from the shechita or it died from, from bullets. It was crazy matzah. But usually, once something is shechted, it's shechted, it doesn't come back. So let's understand what these words mean. These are very important words. So too, when you sell something, it has to be a complete mechira. And not what? And not a fake mechira. Now, there's two types of mechira. Now, the Gemara understands now there's a fake mechira and a real mechira. 
Meaning, if the owner gave up on it, then it's a real mechira. Then it's a real sale. If the owner did not give up on it, then it's not a... So what's going on here? But the Gemara, just to point out, so do a little chazar. The Gemara is going to say, well, real mechira, and not a real mechira, has nothing to do with the owner. Like we're thinking now that it makes a difference whether the owner gave up or didn't give up. And if he gave up, it's a real mechira. He didn't give up. It's not a... No, 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 no. Real mechira, not a real mechira means, did I sell it forever or did I sell it for 30 days? If I sell something for 30 days, what is that really? Is that a mechira? What is that called? That's a rental. That's, what's, that's the maskana of the Gemara. But now we're understanding, we're in, our, in this space where it makes a difference if the owner gave up or not. Eimas says the Gemara, when did this happen? If the owner didn't give up, this is called shini rishos without yiyosh. I, I sold it, I gave it to another person, it's another possession, but there's no giving up over here. It doesn't work. You give back to the owner. El the original owner gave up. If you, Rav, are correct, that after Yush, it's yours 100%, the Ganov becomes a new owner. Why in the world would the thief have to pay four or five? This is a given that if it becomes the owner's, as much as we don't like this, but that's the halacha, if it becomes the Ganav's, it's his 100%. So then once he does something with it, he shechted his own animal. Why should he pay a, a penalty? It's his. Yeah, it came to him in, in the wrong way, and he has to pay for it. 100% he's going to have to pay for it. But why does he have to pay a penalty? It's his. How logically it says. Says the Gemara, you understood it wrong. As we're going to see again, we're going to do Chazar today a bunch of times, a bunch of things. One of them is this line, that what it means that it's not a good Mechira means he sold it for 30 days. That's why it's not a good Mechira. Nothing to do with the owner, the original owner giving up or not giving up. We don't care about the original owner. Even if the original owner didn't give up, it's a good Mechira when it comes to the Ghana. But why is it not considered a good Mechira? Because he, th- he sold it for 30 days. When you sell something for 30 days, that's not a Mechira, that's more of a, of a rental. That's a lease, not a, not a mechira. Okay, so now we're also prat Okay, So Rabbi Sai, here's the here's a brisa. It's very simple. We have three cases, and they're all talking about. As you see, there's a a really really skinny ganav. He's ganav two. And not such a skinny guy, Gan of one. Okay, so there's two Gan of them. Gan of one stole it initially, Gan of two stole it afterwards. So there's three possibilities. <coughs> Possibility number one, all the way to the right, is that the Gan of two stole it from Gan of one. That's a very simple case. Gan of one stole it. It's still, he's still using it, whatever Gan of one is using. Gan of two says, oh, I learned in Chedar, go to a Gan of Potter, whatever that means. We, we didn't even get to such a concept. He has it. He steals it from the Ganav, okay? And that halacha is, Ganav number one has to pay the owner double, because he's a Ganav. Ganav number two doesn't have to pay Ganav number one. He just has to pay the... the he, doesn't, he doesn't pay a, a fine. He just pays the, the carrot. The second case is a little different. Second case is the Ganav number one stole it. And there's two options. Either Tavach or Machar, which would be the third case. The middle case is where the, the first Ganav goes ahead and sells it. Let's say I, I threw in that little guy with the robe. I didn't have it yesterday. I wanted a second guy, but Yoshi wasn't around. So I put it in myself and I didn't want to mess up the drugs. I made him really small. So excuse me. A little guy with the robe. Ganav number one sells. You see it's in a cage. It says sold. I don't know if you could zoom in on it. You guys up there, you, you're able to, Dave? The middle case, it says sold. He sells the sheep. In a cage, he did a great job. Sells it to, to not to the guy in number two, sells it to the guy in the robe. This, as soon as he sells it, how much is he chayev? Four. He's not allowed to sell. Guy of two comes along and steals it from the guy in the robe. From the guy in the robe. So guy in number two has to pay careful. So we have to understand why he has to pay careful. It was the Yish here, well, there's no Yish, that's, that's what the Gemara is going to discuss. Basically, we're going to be discussing mainly the middle case. Third case is very simple. As you know, 
one of my pet peeves is when people take things. Here in Eretz Yisrael, they, go, they come to a Kiddush, they walk out of the, you see a guy walking out of the Kiddush with two giant plates of cake and cookies. What are you doing? Uh, I'm bringing it to my brothers and my mother. Yeah, but it's not appropriate. You're taking a little bit much, no? No, 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 the, the Baal Simcha does not, it's not, he doesn't care. A whole cake with the Bar Mitzvah thing, with the tefillin, he's taking it home. Okay. So a guy did worse than that to me. He came to my uh, barbecue. He's sitting here in the room. I don't care if he's mavoyish, and I have no idea what it is. He came to my barbecue, and I had meat from Chicago. And I was giving sirloin, a mamish, beautiful steaks from Chicago. He decided he took raw meat, raw meat he took home. He didn't want to eat it then. He wanted to do his own barbecue when, when he wanted to. And he thought that was okay. <laughs> anyway, so that's Gneva. I'm not Michael the guy. <laughs> and it was three years before he, five years before he, this is, we're talking about eight years ago. I don't do, I haven't done barbecue in my house in a long time. I don't know what it was. Research? Oh, him? He has a meat store. Oh, okay. Okay. Since then, you pay me back a thousand times over. I'm going to you. So, in meat, I'm talking about. Fine. So, this guy, God of number one, steals a sheep. God of number one, shechs the sheep. When he shechs it, the moment he shechs it, he's chayev four times. God of number two, right before God of number one does a barbecue, he takes his meat. He steals the meat. How much does he have to pay back? Just the carrot. Let's see all these three cases inside. Meisve, like the wide line. That's the easiest case. A guy stole it, and a second Ganav came and stole from the first guy. The first guy has to pay Kefal. Obviously, he stole it. He only pays... Let's go back here. Karen. Why does he only pay Karen? Because the Pasuk says, Viguna Mebeso Ish. You only pay Karen to the original, to, to the owner. So he doesn't have to pay the Ganav twice. If the second case, the original Ganav steals it and he sells it to the guy in the robe. So the guy in the robe, did he acquire this animal? Yes. Why? Called Shinui Rishos. Shinui Rishos. And then a second kind of steals it from the guy in the robe. So there's a, a ganav that came to the rov and says, Rabbi, give me a bracha from my parnosa. He says, what do you do? He says, I'm shtikal ganav. He says, no, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't give brachas for, for ganavim. It's not, it's not appropriate. So, but Rabbi, please. He says, it doesn't make sense. Why would I give you a bracha that you should steal and rob people? He says, no, no, no. Give me a bracha that... Anybody that had a gzera from in a shamayim that he should be robbed, it should be done through me. <laughs> oh, so in case number two, that the guy stole it from the guy in the robe, he has to pay kefal to the guy in the robe. Why? Because the guy in the robe acquired it with the shini rishos. The first guy that stole it, he has to pay four times because he sold it. It's a din in selling. If you don't sell, you don't pay four, you only pay two. Third case. He stole it, shechted it, so immediately he's chayv dalid. Or hey, I just, in this, in this chart, it doesn't say anything about hey, just because there's no room to put another letter. We'll call it dal to make it easier. We're talking about a sheep, not a, not a cow. And then. Somebody stole his meat after it was shechted. Doesn't pay kevel. Elo Karen Bilvad. The question is, if the let me ask you a question. I ask you a question. Ganav number one, did he acquire this animal by shechting it? Absolutely. There's no greater shinoi maisa than shechting. If I take a piece of wood and make it into a cheer, it becomes the ganavs. So how come Ganav number two doesn't have to pay Ganav number one, Kefal? It's not my question, it's the Gemara's question. 
So it doesn't matter. You, whatever you steal, you have to pay kefal. And the, now, halachically, the owner is the ganav. This is the first ganav. So ganav number two came and took his meat. So ganav number two has to pay the ganav number one. Says Gemara Ketanim Yom Tziyasa. So we're going to prove a question against Rav. Now what? Rav holds again, Yush, acquire, he acquires things with the Yush. So let's look at the second case. Ganav umachor ba'achor gnavon. He, the first Ganav stole it, sold it to the guy in the robe. A guy comes and steals it from the guy from the robe. Harishim Misham Tashlum Arabah Khamisha. The first guy has to pay for why? Because he sold it. Mahashin Misham Tashlumi Kaifal. And the second one has to pay Kaifal to the owner to the guy in the robe. Amas, when did this happen? Ilay Milfani Yush. If the original, not the guy in the robe, we don't even have a picture of the guy. The original owner, if he did not have Yush, he did not despair, Shani Amai Misham Tashlumi Kaifal. Then why does the second guy that stole it from the first Ganov, uh, from, from the guy in the robe, why does he have to pay Kefal? Who's the real owner right now? The real owner is not even in this picture. The real owner is the original, original owner. The guy that Ganov number one stole it from. He's still the owner. Why? He never gave up. So if he never gave up, why is Ganov number two paying the guy in the robe? Shinurishus, this is just moving it to somebody else's Domain, below Yish, without anybody giving up. Omar, Omar Kani, is there anybody in the world? Uh, well, we said uh, maybe from these Mandar, is there anybody that holds that just moving an animal into somebody else's domain, the guy's kind of like that? Without any Yish? You need two things. Like Tysus said, there's that little Tysus. Tysus on Samach Vavam base, the last line, Tysus says, there's no such a thing. There's nobody that holds that. That shin, you need Yush in conjunction with Shini Hashem, in conjunction with Shini Rishos. You need, but you need two things. El Yush. You definitely need the guy, the original, original owner to give up. Oh, but you Rav hold that Yush is koina. Be so good that Yush koina. So then, why in the world did the guy? Why does the guy have to pay for the day of the Again, in the middle case, we're talking about the middle case. The middle case, Ganav number one steals it. Is it his or not his? Raboy says, is it his or not his? Well, if we're talking about that there was Yosh, like we just proved, that the guy gave up, then it's his. And when he sells it, it was his thing that he sold. So why does he have to pay for? According to Rav, that says that Yosh makes it yours 100%, so then he shouldn't have to pay for the middle case. Why is he paying for Elamai, he didn't, nobody gave up. Uh, if nobody gave up, why, why does the second guy have to pay Kefal? It's a Mamanav Shach here. We have to say we're for not Kefal because it's owned by another guy. Why is he paying double to somebody that's not even in the picture? The guy in the robe, if there was no Yush, the guy in the robe doesn't exist. He bought something. Ari, could I buy your Gemara over there with all your beautiful things? From him? Could he sell to me? Absolutely not. So wh- why am I paying him? I- I'm paying him Kefal? Who am I paying Kefal to? You're the original owner. Give it back. Give back the Kefal to whoever it belongs to. But you're not paying a, a penalty to something that didn't happen. Elamai. Elamai, there was use. You gave up. It's not your Gemara anymore. You gave up. Oh, you gave up and it's not your Gemara. So then why is Ganav number one paying four times? You can't jump on two chasanas. Either God of number two shouldn't pay kefal. Oh, but you're saying he gave up. Somebody gave up, so there is kefal. So if somebody gave up, then God of number one shouldn't pay four times because shaloyu tevech, shaloyu meicher. From who? Yeah. But the guy gave up already? The guy gave up? No, no use. There's no use, then God of number two shouldn't pay. There's no use, why is God of number two paying? Because there's geneva. But without Yush, without Yush. No, Shinu Rishus only works with Yush. That's what we said. Shinu Rishus needs Yush. It doesn't work without Yush. Okay, there's no such thing as I'm taking your object. Here, I took your thing. I put it over here. Oh, you need that you give up. Plus, it's over here. The Gemara is going to answer a very simple answer. There's a way to dance on two chasanas. That the guy, the original owner, did not give up initially. That's why... Ganav number one has to pay for. He gave up at a later stage. And it makes a lot of sense. You know when he gave up? When Ganav number one sold it, 
Ganav number one is his next door neighbor. So he thought, oh, I'll get it back from him. And now once he goes into the market, it sells it in the street. He doesn't know to who. Then he gave up. Oh, you gave up. Now you have to pay Kefal. Zok to Gemara. Vesu, I'll ask you another question before we get to the answer. Unrav, Diktani Rachel, let's go to case number one. Ganav u'ba'achar u'ganavai. If there was a Ganav who stole it from the first Ganav, Rishon Mishalem Tashlomi Kefal, the first guy that stole it has to pay Kefal. Why? Because he's a Ganav. Vashenim Mishalem El Karev. And the second guy doesn't have to pay Kefal, only Karev. As the Gemara, Mirti Lachi Yush Kebina, we just established that we're talking about the Wuaz Yush, Visoka Dadu Yush Kaina, and if, according to you, Rav, Yush works perfectly, Shane Amayanim Shalom Lil Karen, why does the second Ganav not have to pay the first Ganav Kefal? It's the first Ganav's 100%. El Olav, Shmamino, Yush Lekani, Vikashi Lil Rav, so we have a bomb cash on Rav, Omar Rava. It says Rava, but this is Baraham and Taratzli. Do you really believe that this Brisa, the way it is, 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 is good? This Brisa has a big flaw in it. And once we answer the flaw, then all your questions go away. Why? Because let's look at the last case. Electronic Seva, look at the last case. A guy steals something, he shechts it. The second he shechts it, it becomes his. But he has to pay four because he shechted somebody else's animal. But what happens after he shechted? It becomes his. And somebody steals his meat right before he makes a barbecue. That makes a lot of sense. The second guy doesn't have to pay kefal to the first ganav. That doesn't make sense. The first ganav who shechted it. He, he changed the actual animal. It was a live animal, now it's a dead animal. So that's called Shinimaisa, changing something. Changing something should make it yours. It should be the Ganav's 100%. So the second Ganav should pay the first Ganav, Kefal. Why does he not pay Kefal? Says Rava. Therefore, Elilailam Kula Yush. Obviously, everything is before Yush. Now, if everything's before Yush, that answers all the questions on Rav. Why? Because the big question on Rav is if it's after Yush, it should be, become his 100%. And it's a riot that it, that it doesn't work. Well, we're talking about before Yush. That's why it doesn't become his 100%. Oh. Just switch the Seifa to the middle. And the middle to the Seifa. And then say this. Okay, and then we'll go to the next one. No, I'm just kidding. There's a beautiful chart here. Look, look what happens. If you look at this chart, we're going to take the middle piece where it says number two uh, in the middle and where it says number two at the end. If we switch those, we just had a major cash. Rav says, why? All the way to the left. Number two pays Karen. You should pay Kefal. Why? He stole meat that's about to go on the barbecue that is owned 100% by Ghanav number one. Then Ghanav number two should pay Kefal, not Karen. The answer is, he does pay Kefal. There's a little bit of a problem here. We mixed up the second case with the third case. So we take the... You see, Mendy? You're not seeing. If you take the Karen from case number three and put it on case number two, and you take the Kefal from case number two and put it on case number three, everything works out. You do this, boom. That's Rav's Teretz. So it goes like this. Now we see it inside. Let's take the, the last case and make it the, the second case. And say this. The second case, the middle case. So the first guy is going to pay four. Oh, now it makes sense. You ask me, why does the second guy pay Kefal? There's no Yush. Oh, he doesn't. He only pays Karen. He doesn't pay Kefal. The Shinur shows below Yush like Kani because there's no Yush over here. And just moving it to somebody else's domain doesn't do anything. But the third case, when he shechted it. So now he chayef four. But it became the Ganovs. Yeah, of course. The second Ganov has to pay the first Ganov, Kefal, because it's the first Ganov. Why? So the bottom line is, there's no question on Rav from here, because we're not even talking about Yush. We're talking about before Yush. Okay. 
Yeah? A little bit more Hezber? What was the question? The question is, if there was Yosh, if Yosh is Kaina, why does he pay four? It says, why is he paying four? There's no Yosh. That's why. If there's no Yosh, he has to pay four. Okay, Zokti Gemara, Rapapa Amar Loilam Loy Teipuch. So Rapapa doesn't like this business. What are you going to change? It takes something from the middle, put it at the end, and then put it in the middle. He goes back, let's go back. What happened? Huh? What are you talking about? Yeah. The question was from the middle case. Why is the middle case pay? Yeah. Don't switch it. Say for the last case where he shechted it. No, it didn't go back. No. You're asking me, how come the second Ganov in the, in, the, in the third case, the second Ganov, why does he not pay Kefal? Why does he pay Kerry and he should pay Kefal? He stole it from the first Ganov. The answer is because it goes according to Bishamai. The Amri Shinu Bim Koimoimed. Bishami hold that you can never acquire it by making changes like we learned by the Estan Zaina. You take uh, olives, you make it into oil. That doesn't change anything. It stays the owners over here also. Ihachi. So what do you tell me? Rapapa says no. There is Yush. Rabba says there's no, we're not talking about Yush. There's no Yush and there's no question around. But Ihachi, but if you tell me that there is Yush over here, then we go back to the problem. Kashi Reishum Tsiyasal Rav. You're telling me there's Yush. So, why does he have to pay four? If the, if the guy gave up, so it's yours. So then why do you have to pay four? Also in the ratio, why does the second guy have to pay Karen? It's yours. The second guy should pay Kefal. Okay, so we have a problem. Oh, so this is the, the answer we mentioned before. We're talking about before years. Again, so if we're talking about before this whole price of we're talking about before the guy gave up, no question around. The whole, the whole point of asking a question around is if you have a situation where you see that somebody gave up and it doesn't become his, that's a question around. We're not talking about this issue. We're talking about a situation. There's no years. That there's two stages. Initially, in, in, in the middle case, initially the owner, the original, original owner, he did not give up. He thought he's going to get it back from his neighbor, Ganav number one. So Ganav number one has to pay four times. Why? Because it was never his. There's no giving up. So he pays four. But once Ganav number one sold it, then the original, original owner gave up. It was stage two in giving up. Then he did give up. Oh, since he gave up, Ganav number two has to pay Kefal to the guy in the robe. The guy that bought it, the guy in the robe, Yush. He's kind of with Yush. So Rashi explains why would you say that only in the second case that the, the guy has to pay Kefal and not in the first case? Or, Lukhar, you see that you need Yush and Shinurushos. You need two things. No, that's not true. Yush works on its own. Nami Konigabi Ganov. It works. El Dele Mishkachas and Mishalmi Tarvayu Ganov Rishim Ganov Sheni El Bach. The only way in the world I could come up, how do I explain that two Ganovim, Ganov number one, Ganov number two, have to pay special penalties? How, do, how, is it, how is it possible? Either one pays, either the first guy pays special penalties, or the second guy pays special penalties. Either there's a Giyush. And if there's Yush, the second guy should pay penalty. If there's no Yush, the first guy should pay penalty. Not the second. How do you, how do you have a situation where two people, two gun oven pay penalties, Kefal and Dalbe? And the answer is in this special case, where in the beginning there's no Yush, and later on there's Yush. Itmar. All right, Rabbi said you can wake up now. There's a new sugya. Itmar. Don't be misyash. Don't be misyash. If you slept for more than 30 minutes, the, you can watch Nagavas in the back. I'm not talking to you, Lauren. It was only five minutes. <coughs> I'm paying attention. Don't worry about it. Itmar. Check this out. This is beautiful. <laughs> Dr. Epstein is thinking about it. You're thinking about it, huh? Okay. We have three sheets here when you sell something. 
Rabbi said, the good news is Maruba is only for another two weeks. Don't, don't despair. No Yish. <laughs> no, it's, that's it. We're done with the heart so good, with the cloud rather cloud. There's three, when you sell something, again, I saw there's a little bit of confusion. It's an interesting Allah. Ganav steals something, he only has to pay twice. If he does something severe, like selling that item after he steals it, then we impose on him another penalty called Dalid, which actually includes the Kefal, as we'll see soon. When exactly did he sell it? Before the original owner gave up or after the original owner gave up? So we have a three-way machlaikis, a very simple machlaikis. One man the says before, one man the says after, and one man the says both. Okay? It's that simple. Itmar, if you sell, the Ghana sells the item before the original owner gave up, Rav Nachman Omar Chayev, it's a machloikis. Hello. It's beautiful. Rav Nachman says, you have to pay four. Rav Sheshi saw my potter, you don't have to pay four. Rav Nachman Omar Chayev, why? The Torah says, sell. It doesn't, doesn't say when, it doesn't say how. If the guy sold it, he's Chayev four. Does the Torah mention that the original owner gave up? No. Vozab and he sold it. Loish nolafin yush, loish nolachar yush. It doesn't matter when. Rav Sheshi Zomar Potter why chiyuv lachar yushu. Rav Sheshi says you Potter why because it's only after the original owner gave up that hadom ayisav. It has to be a real sale. You can't make a make believe sale and be chayev. Alafin yush loy hadom ayisav. What kind of sale is this? If the original owner didn't give up, it's still the original owners. Loy mechayev lachar. Do me the tviicha be inon has to be. Just like shechting the Hanu Maisav, that there's a Shinu Maisav and something happened there, so too when you sell it, it has to happen after something happened. How do I know? The Sanyo Amar Rabbi Kiva. We have this, this Chazara, boy said. Why did the Torah, time of the Quran, I'll give you the reason of the Torah. Why did the Torah say, Why is there a concept of four or five? Because you did the Avera over and over. First you stole it, now you, you did it. Maisav on your head, you went and you shechted it, you went and you sold it. It's a beautiful Satmarov. I wish and I hope it's true. He says, this that it says in all the Svarim, that if you do an Avera, you have to roll in, in snow and you have to do 5,000 uh, Tanesim, whatever, all the Svarim, you know, the scary stuff. And that's only if a person does one Avera, one time. But if a person does an Avera over and over, then, you, then all the stuff that the Svarim say doesn't apply. And he explains, when you do an Avera, you have to be metakin, the Yolam Salya, and whatever. When you do that very over and over, the actual fact that you're controlling yourself not to do it again, even though it became rooted in you, in Shtarish, that itself is so powerful and it's so hard on a human being that that itself is the Tikkun. Halavai should be right. <clears throat> Says the Gemara. So when did this happen? Amos. If the owner, the original owner didn't give up, Miyakish in the Shtarish. What kind of sale is this? You didn't redo an Avera. It never even happened. It didn't even start. The, the original owner didn't give up. It has to be that the original owner gave up. No, it's not true. It has nothing to do with the owner giving up, not giving up. Let's say there's no use. You repeated a bad act. <clears throat> you stole. And then you went ahead and you sold it. That's repeating your act. That, that itself causes you to pay for. The task says, that when a person steals and he denies it, he denies the fact that he stole, he asks him, why did you steal? I didn't steal. Oh, we'll give you a penalty, Kefal. Then you go and you double up and you sell it. So we double up your penalty. Instead of four, two, now you pay four because you lied again. So I asked Rebbe Levi Freeman, what about, why is there five? How did the five come in? That's in four. Okay, we have to get there to that sugyo and the difference between taking the sheep on your back and being embarrassed. Again, we have a machloikis. When exactly is this sale taking place? Before the original owner gave up or after the original owner gave up? Or both. Just like uh, the, the shechting doesn't come back. When does this happen? If it happened before giving up, why does it go back? Give it back to the owner. It happened after the owner gave up. This is the Rav Nachman we had before. That we're not talking about a regular mechira, the, the, the owner think about it, they give up, not give up. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a sale that wasn't a good sale. Why? Because he sold for 30 days. Selling for 30 days is considered a rental, not a sale. 
Says Gemara, and, oh, I have another man His name is Rebelazar. That you only are chayiv four times if the original owner gave up. Why? Domer Rebelazar. Dav Samaches on the base. Hey, Dash, it's time to give a Yush by the You should know, says Rebelazar, that every time you steal something, the owner gives up right away. Why? And then what do you have? You have Yush, says Rashi, and Shin Rushos. Then now you have two things. If he gave up, you have Yush. Once you have Yush, and then you change uh, domains, you have two things, and therefore you kind of. And he proves it. Torah says, If you sold or shechted the animal, you have, you have to pay four or five. Wait a minute, says Rebbe Lazar. What happened to Yush? You need Yush. Oh. So it says Rebbe Lazar, you need Yush. Now look at the chart for a second. Rebbe Lazar says, every Gnev has to have Yush, and that's why you chayv. So which shita does he hold like? Rav Sheish is the middle shita that you do you sell you sell after the ziyush. Okay, very good. So Rav Laz is like Rav Sheish. Vidilma says Gemara Afakav What what what, who, what force? In the, maybe there's no ziyush. Amri loy sokadaita. Do me the tviicha. It has to be like tviicha. Ma tviicha. The hanu ma'asev av mechira. The hanu ma'asev. It has to have ziyush. It has to have something. It has to be a serious sale. You can't sell something that's not not yours. Says Gemara, Yush, and if and if there's no Yush, then then it's a fake sale. It's not a real sale. Says Gemara, What's Rebbe Lezer's proof that every single theft has Yush with it? Maybe in this case, the reason why he pays four is because we heard with our own ears that the guy said, "Vayle the chesar and kiss that as miyish." Says Gemara, but maybe there's no right. Maybe maybe a typical gneva. There's no Yush. I don't know. It can't be because it has to be similar to shechting. You could you could steal and shecht that millisecond without hearing any yush, not yush. Why? Tvicha makes a shinu mice and it becomes yours. Since they're similar, tvicha and mechira, they, they go together word after word. So then without hearing that the guy's miyayish, it also works. But without hearing that it's miyayish, there's no yush. Elamai says, Rebbe Lazar, that has to be Yush immediately. Every time something is stolen, the guy's miyayish. Omelay Rebbe Yochanan. Gneva benefesh lechiyach. Unbelievable. Mamish in Yonah de When you steal a human being, the Torah says, V'goyin evishu mecharoi, benimtza b'yadai, mois yumas. If you steal a human being, and that's the Gneva, by the way, in the Aserus Adibris also, stealing a human being, not stealing uh, an item. When you steal a human being, you're chayiv misa, benimtza b'yadai, mois yumas. If you steal him and sell him, then you chayiv misa. If you don't sell him, you're not chayiv misa. So it says, what? Oh, that's exactly what I'm trying to talk. When, a, when you steal a human being, is it miyayish or not miyayish? Says Rashi, listen to this. We're talking about the, 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 the hostages. Terrible situation. Three months already in captivity. Did they give up on themselves? Says Rashi, Gneve benefesh. Hagoynev nefesh umacharoi. Ain kan yush. There's no. There's absolutely no giving up. Shin adam misyayish alatzmai. A human being never gives up on himself. He always has hope that he'll be released. He'll be. He'll be. Um, what's the word? Rescued. I heard that yesterday there was a failed rescue. Was soldiers got killed in that also. Rahman al Islam. But he, he has hope. He'll be rescued. So what's his raya? There's Maisa Shoyer Aboisai. There's a lady. Who walks into Hatzorfim to the to the silver store with a crying baby? She's feeding the baby. This battle, uh, okay, fine. She says, "I want to see a beautiful, your nicest menorah." Oh, here's the nicest menorah. She looks at, "Oh, it's very nice." Can I show it to my husband outside? He's in the car. Sure. She leaves the stroller with the baby and she leaves outside. Problem is, she never comes back. Turns out that she stole somebody's baby from the store next door. There's all this. She walked in pretending that she had a baby. And the baby's crying as that. And because she left her baby there, so they let her take the menorah outside. So the G'dayim said, that's going to, this is Mamish, uh, uh, in, in our day, it's not a Mechari, but it's, she kidnapped a, a human being. Even though it was for 20 minutes, whatever it was, it's kidnapping. So, besides, it's Sister Deraisa to steal a menorah, but, okay. Give out. Fine. Says the Gemara. So what's Rabbi Yochanan trying to prove? Look, Rashi just said that there's no giving up on a human being. Yet you sold the human being, but he never gave up on himself. 
So here's a situation where I'm selling somebody without him giving up, and it's not even a sale. You can't sell another human being. It doesn't work. But it's considered a sale. So in our case also, I sold something that's not really yours, but I'm selling it. This is such a thing as selling something that's not yours. Even though there's no Yish, you still have. Says You see that Rabbi Yochanan is of the opinion, if we go back to this list, he holds like Rav. That even before Yish, there is a Mechira. But what about Lachir Yish? Does Rabbi Yochanan also hold like Rav Nachman on the bottom? We know for a fact that he said before Yish. Like, oh, like, like kidnapping, it's before Yish. But what does he hold also after Yish? <clears throat> even, so in other words, yes, even Lachi Yush, you're Chayev. So he holds like Rav Nachman, both, before and after. Rav Yochanan Amar Chayev, that you're Chayev, Dalad Vehei, after Yush, Chayev, Ben Lefnei Yush, Ben Lachi Yush, Rav Shlokish Amar Potter, Chayev, Ben Lefnei Yush, who, Av Lachi Yush, Kona, Rav Shlokish is like Rav on top, just before Yush. Once there's Yush, says Rishlakish, it becomes yours. And if you sell it after it becomes yours, you don't have to pay for it. Which we saw this far a number of times. Let me ask you a question, says Rishlakish. Oh, here's the case. There's three steps here. He steals a sheep. He says, oh, I'm a big tzaddik, I'm not such a ganav. Sometimes I steal and I take it for myself, but sometimes I steal. I'm Robin Hood, I give it to the Beis Hamid. And then he slaughters it, which is me'ila, whatever. Does he have to pay four or not? The answer is no, he doesn't pay four. Why? Because he didn't, st- he didn't shecht a human being's animal. He shechted Hashem's animal. How did he have the right to be magdashit? Who is it his to be magdash? What happened there? <laughs> Very important Rashi here. We must see this Rashi inside. Says Rashi. Says Rashi. He shechted from Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Says in the Torah, you have to take from your friend in order to pay for. But listen to this. The key in the patrim kefal. Since you are part from kefal, listen to this. If you're not paying kefal, you don't pay four and five. Why? You can only pay either four or five, not three or four. Once you take off and you remove the kefal, you hear this? So the four and five actually contains within it kefal. Once you remove the kefal, now it becomes three and four. There is no such thing as paying three or four, so the whole thing fl- flies out. Ask the Gemara how this happen. If the original owner didn't give up, how did I say, how did I sanctify? How did I make an animal kadosh? Of course, shaloi has to be your animal in order to make it hegdish. It must be that it happened after yush. Oh, so look at this case. This is a this is a tavach over here. This is a hegdish, but it's only because of that. That's why you don't have to pay hegdish. That's why you don't have to pay four or five. The the But what if he didn't make this animal kadosh? Tovach mishal tashlumar bava chamisha. He would have to pay four. Oh, this is like a question on Rav. This is a question that Rav is asking Shlokish. If you hold that Yush makes it yours, am I mishalim? Why would he have to pay four or five? Shaloi tevei, shaloi moicher. Says the Gemara, Malech of my skin on kegon shegdishu baalim biad ganov. Look what happened. Look at over here. The, the, who is Magdashit over here? The Ganav. But if we go this way, over here, it's the owner made it Hagdish. When? After it was stolen. Okay. Umi Does that work? How could the owner make something Kaddish when it's not in his possession? It's in the Ganav's house. If something is stolen, the Ganav can't make it Kaddish, and the, the owner can. It's not the Ganavs. It's not in his possession. Amri, who the he holds like the Tznuim. It's not. Beautiful thing. The fourth year of grapes. What do you do? It has a lacha of Maizashani. It's like Maizashani. Not, not it's like Maizashani. The what? 
you take the fruit, you bring it to your shalayim, your shalayim. If it's too much for you, then you take the, the fruit, you transfer it into money. The money becomes kadesh. What if a, a guy comes, a ganav, like, like uh, Yossi Wallace's story where he took uh, some orange off an orchard, it wasn't his. Ganav comes, oh, beautiful grapes, takes two grapes and eats them. He's now over the Issa Raisa. Not only is he stealing, but he, he's eating Karen Revai out in Bet Shemesh, not in Yerushalayim. What does the Tzenua do? Big Tzadik. He says, I know people take Amoichel them, but there's a problem. They're going to be eating. Here's money. Here's a pile of money. Everything they take, after they take it, it's going to go on this money. It's going to be Mechul. But they already took it. So how, how, how do you have the right to do that when they already, when it was stolen? It's in the possession of the Ghana. The answer is, you, they hold, the Tznum hold, that you could do it after it's in the possession of the Ghana. So two by us. You could make something hegdish even though it's not in your possession. Rav Shalosh says, why are they called Tznum? Because the Tznua, he does this still a hate. Nobody knows that he's doing this. The Ghana doesn't know that he did it. He doesn't scream, oh, Ganev, Ganev, and he doesn't scream, look what a tzaddik I am. Oh, I'm helping all these people that steal from me. He does it under the table where nobody knows. We have to go weiter. Vare! Sh- uh, sh- you know what? We have to stop over here. In the middle of a sugya, unfortunately. Let's see. What's tomorrow? Wow. You know what? Let's do two more lines. Vare! You could leave. Vare chazoro. Vare chazoro ke'en lebalem. That's the Gemara. If... Why does the Ghanav have to pay Kefal? The owner made his animal Hegdish. So whose animal is it? It's the owner's animal, which became Hegdish through the owner. Okay, so the Ghanav is walking around with it. But the Ghanav doesn't have to pay Kefal for that. Says the Gemara Look what happened over here. Oops. First he stole it. Then he went to Bezdin. And Bezdin said, you have to pay. Then comes the owner and it makes it Hegdish. If the Bezdin made a verdict and they said you have to pay my ear your Higdish, then who cares if you made a Higdish? Look at this. Even if you take off the Higdish part, he should be potter. Why? My time, I'll keep it the Pasku The guy, the Ganav went and checked it. But after he was Oymid Bedin, you don't have to pay four for that. Why? He's not a Ganav, now he turns into a Gazan. Once Bezdin chop him and they know who he is, and he went and he, and he, and he shechted it. Now he has a halach of a gazlan. And a gazlan doesn't pay for it. Five. Top of Samach Tetzel Medalek. Three more lines and chakras. And you can start from Baruch Hu. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if they just say, they don't, make, they don't say a verdict. They just say, you have to give. But I don't understand exactly. You have to understand exactly what I mean. It's not a verdict written psak then. We think that you have to give. It looks like we're going we're gonna to give the psak tomorrow, but you, you're going to have to give it. In that case, you do have to pay four or five. My time, given the like Pascha Milsa, since there was no verdict, there was no psak, I can't think of it, it's still Ghana. In our case, we're talking about in the case where he said, and therefore, when he shachts it, he does have to pay four or five. Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful day. Share. Shema lo is mama kim kirsi ko adino adino shema bi koli tino zda ka shoi zda ko da ka adino ima bi noi zda shmori adino mi amoi kim ko zda ko le manti borei kiri zda adino kim zda nafshi le borei ko di nafshi le adino im shemrim la boi kim shemrim la boi kim ya chay zda adino kim adino ya chay zda bar 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 kudos. Boy, that's the same. I can't go to 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 the same.